Hey everyone, and welcome to our lecture on confounding versus effect modification. So these are two similar, you know, epidemiologic terms. Um, and in this lecture, I'm hoping to go through them and hopefully clarify the two. So as we've discussed in a previous lecture on biases, a confounder is a third variable that is associated with both the exposure and outcome, but not along the causal pathway that leads to an apparent association between the exposure and outcome. So in this case, um, let's imagine the relationship between um, smoking, carrying a lighter, and lung cancer. So if you're interested in seeing if whether carrying a lighter makes you more or less likely to have lung cancer, it makes sense that smoking would be an obvious confounder of that relationship because smoking would make you more likely to carry a lighter and smoking would also make you more likely to have lung cancer. And the way that you can really investigate this statistically is through stratification. So if you first perform an unadjusted analysis where you look at the odds ratio of lung cancer between individuals carrying a lighter compared to individuals not carrying a lighter, you might find an odds ratio of two, meaning that uh, individuals carrying a lighter have two times the odds of lung cancer compared to individuals not carrying a lighter. And we find this to be statistically significant um, with a p-value less than 0.05. If we were then to stratify into smokers and non-smokers, if smoking is indeed a confounder, then we would expect the association between carrying a lighter and lung cancer to disappear within each of these groups. So among smokers, those who carry a lighter only have 1.1 times the odds of um, lung cancer compared to those who don't carry a lighter. And among non-smokers, those who carry a lighter have 1.2 times the odds of lung cancer compared to those who don't carry a lighter. So a key idea is that if you stratify an analysis on a confounder, you will find no significant association between the exposure and outcome in each of the stratified groups. The association we had originally found has disappeared in each of these groups with a p-value greater than 0.05. Let's compare this to an effect modifier. So an effect modifier is a third variable that's associated only with the outcome, and it significantly modifies the effect of the exposure on the outcome. So if we were doing a study looking at the effect of tobacco use on the risk of squamous cell cancer of the head and neck, um, a potential effect modifier to consider is alcohol use, given that we know alcohol use also puts you at increased risk for squamous cell cancer of the head and neck. But the association between alcohol use and tobacco use isn't as clear. You know, alcohol use doesn't necessarily cause tobacco use, and tobacco use doesn't necessarily cause alcohol use. So let's investigate its role as a potential effect modifier. So if we first perform an unadjusted analysis, um, we would find that the odds of squamous cell cancer among smokers is 2.5 times that the odds of squamous cell cancer of the head and neck among non-smokers. And this is a statistically significant finding with a p-value less than 0.05. If we were then to stratify by alcohol use, we would find that among alcohol users, the odds ratio of head and neck cancer among those who are smokers is 15 times that the odds of, um, head, of squamous cell cancer of the head and neck among non-smokers. So we see that the, um, you know, the effect of smoking on the risk of head and neck cancer has been modified by alcohol use. And similarly, we look that among alcohol non-users, the odds ratio has decreased such that among individuals who don't use alcohol, um, the risk of head and neck cancer among those who smoke is 1.4 times the, the odds of um, head and neck cancer among those who do not smoke. And we see that now among alcohol users, the effect has been greatly increased and is you know, highly statistically significant. And among alcohol non-users, the um, association has diminished and is now no longer statistically significant. So a key idea is that if you stratify on an effect modifier, the association between the exposure and outcome will be significantly different between the stratified groups. And often you see this pattern where the association is strengthened in one group and weakened in the other. So unlike in a confounder where we saw that the association was eliminated in both groups, if you stratify on an effect modifier, you will just see that the association under study will be significantly different between the two stratified groups with it being statistically significant in one group and often strengthened and no longer statistically significant in another group and often weakened. As usual, I recommend that you try the associated problems with this lecture uh, to see whether you understood the, the concepts. And as usual, please like, comment, subscribe, and good luck.